good news is your dates are here. What's the bad news? They're dead. Oh, you're so cool, Brewster. <laughs> Everybody's a suspect. Hey, Ted, where the hell's Mark's bro? Don't fuck with the Chuck. Welcome back to Toe Tag Reviews. I'm Chuck, and today we're going to be talking about 1985's A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2, Freddy's Revenge. It was directed by Jack Shoulder. Jack Shoulder was not a fan of the original Nightmare on Elm Street. I was never a huge fan of the original. I mean, I, I understood why it was good, and I understood why it was successful. I respect the fact that he went and made his own Nightmare on Elm Street movie, so, like, that's cool, but to say you weren't a fan of the original Nightmare, like, that's, that's a pretty ballsy statement. The screenwriters purposely included the homoerotic subtext, and because they did that, it, this movie is widely known as the gayest horror film of the 80s, so it's got that going for it. <laughs> Brad Pitt and Christian Slater originally wanted to play Jesse, and I can't picture a young Brad Pitt playing Jesse in this movie. A young Cliff Booth playing, like, nah, dude, I can't see it. Kim Myers was cast because she looks identical to Meryl Streep, especially in the movie Kramer vs. Kramer. Before I jump into the movie, I want to give a special shout out to my buddy Jay. I hope you and the missus enjoy the video, and I hope all is well, buddy. On to the film. The movie actually begins with a quick cameo of Robert England driving the bus, and he decides to take a little detour and goes off-roading. It scares the shit out of Jesse, and it turns out it's just a nightmare. He's just super sweaty, and whenever he wakes up, he's always screaming at the top of his lungs, and he, in my opinion, is a scream queen. <laughs> It like rivals Jamie Lee Curtis. As Jesse heads downstairs to uh, get some breakfast, his dad's busting his balls about cleaning his room and unpacking since they just moved into the Elm Street house. If he looks familiar, he's Bert from Return of the Living Dead. Rabbit weasels. What? Meryl Streep shows up. <laughs> Sorry. Kim Myers, AKA Lisa. She shows up and takes them both to school and gym class, Jesse's playing baseball and Grady ends up pantsing him they have like a little scuffle. Afterwards, Grady ends up telling Jesse about the house that he just moved into and like the history and like Nancy and Glenn and all the murders and shit. And Jesse's kind of very dismissive about it and rightfully so. Like you're not gonna believe someone who said that shit to you. Like, come on. Jesse ends up having another nightmare, but he ends up seeing Freddy and Freddy tells him, You've got the body. I've got the brain. I really like this part because when he pulls his skin back, you see his brain like pumping and kind of moving and the effects right there are super fucking cool. He ends up waking up and delivers yet another ear piercing scream. Ah! It's a lot in this movie, but he ends up going to leave and hang out with Lisa and Papa Bear's like, no, no. he wants that room clean and he wants it clean now. But I like this part because he starts storming up the stairs like a kid. He ends up cleaning his room, he's jamming out, and he starts doing this really weird dance, and there's just a lot of odd things happening. Lisa ends up showing up. Right when she walks in, he pops the cork in. But I'm just really glad because somebody else out there dances like that when they have to clean the room. Sorry, not sorry. She ends up helping him clean the room and they end up finding Nancy's diary. She starts reading it and Jesse ends up connecting the dots and putting the pieces together of what Grady was saying. And when Jesse ends up reading it, he reads about Freddy Krueger and what he looks like. He knows that that's the guy in his dreams fucking with him. Jesse dreams and goes to the basement and we see Freddy with his glove. He pretty much tells Jesse, I need you to kill for me, but Jesse ends up dipping out because he ain't about that life. The next part confuses me though because it's 97 degrees in the house. They don't crack a window. They they don't put fans on like nothing that's that idea is right out the window their pet birds one's getting slashed up and the other one goes completely rabid it starts like attacking everyone in the house it's knocking lamps over it's scratching the dad's face it just explodes out of nowhere the dad ends up blaming jesse what'd you use firecrackers you know what he did he used a goddamn cherry bomb that whole part confused the absolute shit out of me and then out of nowhere a bolt of lightning strikes the dishes like what? Anyway, Jesse ends up falling asleep. He dreams and he ends up going to Dom's place. The only person that can pull off this much leather is mommy. When he's in there, he runs into Coach Schneider. He ends up making him take a lap. Go, go, let's go. I wanna see knees up. Knees up, please. He ends up doing a lap and on his way back, Coach Schneider like shoves his bitch ass into a bunch of chairs. Dick move, man. 
tells him to hit the shower, so he hits the shower, and out of nowhere, Coach Schneider ends up getting wrapped up by jump rope and dragged into the shower, completely stripped. Towels are whipping his ass. <laughs> what? He ends up getting slashed up in the back. We see Freddy appear, and when Jesse looks down at his hand, he's the one wearing the glove and delivers another ear-piercing scream. <laughs> Jesse gets picked up by the cops and ends up going home. Next day at school, Grady ends up telling Jesse and Lisa about Coach Schneider and how he's dead. Lisa ends up taking Jesse to this old power plant, and that's where they tracked Freddy Krueger down in the boiler room, and they end up burning him. And she's asking him, like, do you feel any connection? Like, do you feel anything? They're tracking him the right way, in my opinion. At Lisa's party, which is a total fucking rager, by the way, Lisa and Jesse are about to make wonderful, visceral, sexy sex. But he ends up getting Freddy tongue, which is... Yeah. After Jesse ends up bailing from the party, he ends up visiting Grady, and the way he wakes him up is a little questionable. <laughs> he just asks him to, like, watch over me while I sleep. If I start acting weird, wake me up. Don't let me leave. Here's where we get the VHS rewind moment. Clear! He can feel Freddy inside of him, and Freddy starts emerging from Jesse's body. Like, you see his eyeball in the back of his throat. You see his arm kind of split open. You see the sweater underneath. All of that shit is super fucking cool. The effects, totally rad. Freddy ends up killing Rod, and Jesse ends up dipping. He goes to visit Lisa, and he tells her, like, I killed Coach Schneider, I killed Grady, and Freddy's inside of me. He's trying to control me and everything. He ends up emerging, and he ends up attacking Lisa, and he pulls a Patrick Bateman. In. like he knocks her down he grabs her ankle and bites it and the way she kicks him in the face is it is shot for shot the same exact sequence as american psycho and it's so fucking cool to me he ends up pulling a ray mysterio and shows up to the party and just murks a couple people and then he just dips out Lisa knows exactly where he's going. So she goes to the power plant. I like the cat that ends up eating the, the little rat. I just like the way the cat's teeth look and how nasty everything is. Freddy's about to kill Lisa. She says the L word and she ends up pulling a Nancy and taking back all the energy that she gave Freddy. She ends up planting a fat and smooch on the Fred Meister. He ends up catching on fire. And when he gets put out, Jesse emerges out of this like cocoon thing. It's fucking weird. You know how it goes. Love's just the strongest thing like ever. Ever. So, of course, it's going to heal him and bring him back to life. The movie comes to an end with some more off-roading, and we hear Freddy's famous diabolical laugh. He ends up going out in the desert again and fades to black. I love this movie, man. It took a whole new approach. It swung for the fences, and it's a tall order to kind of outdo the original movie. There's a lot of strong, memorable moments in this film. Characters, plus I really like all like the detail, like when they're in the bedrooms, all the posters on the wall, a lot of the band posters. I, I just, I love the whole 80s music. A lot of those bands I listen to. I like how he doesn't have a glove in this one. Like he doesn't wear it. The blades come out of his fingers. I like that. I think it's scarier. His overall design in this one, like he looks more burnt. He looks more like disgusting and wet and his eyes are orange. He looks the best in this movie. The cons of the movie, there's a few bad decisions. Like I really don't understand the lightning bolt and the birds exploding and blaming it on a fucking firecracker. And here's a goddamn cherry bomb. There's a lot of dumb moments like that. But sadly, this is the last time we get to see this darker side of Freddy. From Dream Warriors on, he gets more comedic. That's where the one-liners really start coming out. Overall, toe tag score, I give it three out of five. We are 50 subscribers away from hitting 500. To close out 2023, it would be so fucking awesome if we hit that. So if you want to share the video, you'd be helping the channel out. As always, I'm Chuck. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and until then, see you later.